Welcome back. Tensions are running high in the world's top cocoa producer ahead of the highly anticipated presidential election. Despite mounting fears of violent clashes, some Ivorians are hoping to mark, make their mark today. On the 5th of March, President Alassane Ouattara announced he would stand for re-election as he insisted that constitutional amendments introduced in 2016 allowed him to run again. The tensions have stoked fears that the crisis would feed into long-simmering grievances threatening almost 10 years of fragile peace in a country that has never seen a peaceful and democratic transfer of power. Joining us now to discuss the elections in the Ivory Coast is Dr. Charles Singala, President of Africa 55 States and Organization of African Political Parties Forum. Dr. Singala, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Now, a fight for legitimacy is at the center of this weekend's vote, it would seem. So unpack the significance of the current political landscape in the Ivory Coast for us. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Marty, for having me, and uh, uh, good afternoon to the African people on the continent. Um, I think uh, the Ivory Coast is not an isolated situation, you know. Um, it is something that is sad on the continent that uh, we Africans, we keep on uh, fighting for power, you know, just for the sake of being power without uh, some, having something legitimate of trying to build our nations. And the uh, Ivory Coast, the wars hasn't started now. You must remember very well, uh, going back just as early as the 2010, we've had the, so much disunity within the, uh, the, the country when uh, uh, Gabo was disposed of and uh, convicted for criminal activities. You know, and uh, I was surprised that he came back again this uh, uh, election, 2010, as well to try to nominate his uh, intention to uh, stand as president. Among them, there are about 40 political parties who have been rejected by the Electoral Commission of Ivory Coast. You know, and uh, the issue of uh, the 2016 uh, Constitution Amendment, you know, President uh, Quatera, uh, uh, you know, insists that uh, that was the beginning of this term, you know, but the Constitution is very clear that a, president, a presidential candidate or a president can only sit for two terms. And uh, uh, I think what has the actually exacerbated to the situation of violence is uh, for the fact that uh, the hand-picked uh, deputy president whom he thought uh, um, you know, will succeed him, you know, to do whatever his arrangement he was doing, uh, was the um, uh, accidentally, uh, you know, they, they say he, was, he died out of a heart attack, you know, but very suspicious circumstances. And, uh, you know, because of who he lost the candidate whom he thought he would put there to protect his interest, uh, post him being a president, you know, has actually made him to come back and run for the presidential elections. Uh uh, uh, Dr. Singala, you also men made mention of the fact that uh, President Otaro announced that um, he would stand for re-election and he was also saying that the constitutional amendments, as you said, introduced in 2016 allowed him to run again and in fact a court case agreed with him. So what does this mean for the tensions that are currently being seen in, um, in Ivory Coast that are leading to violence? I mean, some people, as we speak, are fleeing parts of that country. Yeah, it's quite uh, unfortunately, you know, um, I have faith in the judiciary system of the Ivory Coast government, you know, and I think uh, that's what decides uh, what we call in on the Ivorian people and the, everybody who's trying to uh, assist Ivory Coast to go through these uh, uh, peaceful elections. If at all there's a peaceful election in Africa, that they respect the constitution judgment, you know, that uh, he can run for another term, you know, because he, they believe that uh, the 2016 amendment was a reset of the presidential term and the, uh, subsequently was mentioned that the, this is a second term now he has to run. You know, that's why he's coming uh, forward to contest the elections. You know, I don't think it's that stupid for him to uh, contest elections when he's not eligible. Uh, the, uh, the, the Electoral Commission of Ivory Coast has actually nominated him to be a candidate. So what the people need to do is, for the sake of peace, is to go and decide by the ballot uh, uh, box and they choose the leader which they, they want for the country to go back to the renew and uh, uh, constitutional normalcy. Um, I, I'm, I'm told that uh, as well that uh, the opposition political parties, they are threatening to boycott the elections. You know, this brings another civil wars uh, already from 2010, 
uh, there's more than 3,000 to 10,000 people has been, uh, has been killed uh, due to this disunity in terms of elections, you know, in the country. Now, in fact, despite calls by the opposition candidates for civil unrest, as you've mentioned, people have still gone out to vote. What does this mean then about the legitimacy of these elections, particularly as it speaks to the outcome? Yeah, uh, look, uh, the, 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 the legitimacy of the, the elections, it depend, it's dependent on the electoral college. You know, those people, the numbers who go to vote, and I think it will be decided on those numbers who win the elections. But uh, we do not see a larger turnout because many of them, uh, like I likely mentioned, you know, they have boycotted. They say the president, Quatera, is not eligible to uh, stand for this election. So a few of them, yes, we can't have all, everybody bad. The rest of them, they said, let's go decide by the ballot box and choose the leader that we need. Um, uh, it, will up to, it is up to the uh, Electoral Commission, you know, to interpret the laws and check what is the legit, like, legitimate numbers uh, which can be constituted to um, a majority vote, you know, that can be decided uh, by the people of Ivory, Ivory co Coast, you know, to decide on which leader they should have. If they have, say, 10 or less than 10 percent of the population, uh, of course, they have to recall the elections again, then there will be another rerun. Uh, to make sure that uh, there is a, a proper representation for the electoral college dependent on the number of voters who are registered in this year's uh, elections. And as well, uh, we must not rule out the uh, political interference from the Francophone countries who has uh, actually for many years been uh, uh, found in the, in the wrong path uh, due to the involvement of uh, France and other multinational countries, you know, in the governance of the countries. And I think that has exacerbated the divisions between the unity in the countries, you know, and the rest of the continent, uh, because they've got their own choice of leaders whom they want to put on the hem of the power uh, so that they can continue uh, collecting the colonial taxes and uh, diverting from the normal independence of, of the country. With this insistence to run for the third term, what does it tell us about Ogotara's political hold and also the support that he's getting? Uh, yes, uh, you know, he's got a very uh, large number of support, you know, from his political parties and from the outside. And uh, uh, you must remember that very well when he came into power in 2011, also the... Uh, his predecessor uh, uh, disputed his elections until he found a criminal case to charge him uh, so that he does not uh, proceed with that uh, criminal judge uh, 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 case. You know, he's got very good support on the ground and I think, uh, you know, it's only the disunity from the politician political parties who hasn't been united, you know, to find an amicable way if they have to depose him off from, the, uh, from, uh, from power. Um, you know, I cannot also not rule out the possibility that uh, you might lose the elections because of what has been happening, the civil unrest and the, what you've likely mentioned, you know, the uh, disunity in the country and the lack of proper uh, 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 governance. You know, the whole government there is dysfunctional uh, because of uh, different factors and areas of people trying to participate in different types of uh, um, uh, elections and uh, as well as the, uh, trying to make sure that the Quateras uh, be removed from uh, uh, the presidential race. I mean, he is, he is over, he's almost 80 years old, you know. Uh, I can't see on many the, 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 um, uh, the main four uh, uh, contestants who are uh, contesting these elections, they, all of them are above 67, 70 years. You know, it is also un, uh, you know, unprecedented that we have uh, the former president, you know, who was there before 2010, you know, also is contesting. He's 86 years old, you know, and this pains me a lot when I talk about governance in the country. Are we lacking leaders or young men and women in Ivory Coast who can contest uh, these elections? Most of them you find he was a deputy president or former president. Can we have a new breed of new leaders, you know, who can take the baton from the old guard? All right, thank you so much, Dr. Charles Singala. That's where we have to leave it for now, African political analyst.